Uh, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> My name's Annie. I've been going to Anchor Point for a couple of months now. I think I started back in like April, I think, ish. <laughs> yeah, came with a friend of mine. So that's that awesome. Yeah. Um, so prior to getting baptized or even coming to Anchor Point, what did your life look like? Like, was yeah. Yeah, not good. Um, like, I started coming to Anchor Point when I was still away from the faith, so, like, I fell away in high school, and that just, like, it just kind of sucked. Like, it, just life was, like, not ideal for a while. Well, I mean, like, I was enjoying my life, but there was this sort of, like, pain that was just sort of sitting there, like, this lump of, like, disdain that wouldn't go away, and I was just like, oh, that's just what life is like. You know, I'm a generally happy person, but everyone's just kind of, like, angry at nothing sometimes. That's probably normal. Um, but then, you know, I kind of, when I got involved in Anchor Point, I was like, wow, I'm, like, really happy when I'm here. Um, and I just sort of feel freed from all of that, that weight. Um, and yeah, I just started getting sort of more involved. My mom would say that I found Jesus through the Holy Spirit, like, because worship and you know just being with God is the kind of thing that sort of brought me back um I guess I'd never really had that presence with God before I think just like being with him so yeah that was a big thing for me um so life before coming to Anchor Point was like fine but not not as good as it is now <laughs> totally yeah um do you think that like um like coming to Anchor Point as a non-believer mm. Was it, um, was it hard to, like, see the things come, like, was it weird being an outside party in this kind of yeah. thing you're not included in? It was super weird. <laughs> um, like, I wanted to be there. I wanted to be here, but, um, I know what was weird about it was just that, like, it was the disdain that I was holding, right? Like, I, I had gone to a place where I was just like, you know what, the people who believe this are wrong. And therefore, like, I have to be angry at them mm. for that. Like, and it, it, part of it, I feel like, was almost a subconscious, like, angry at them for being happy. Mm. When, like, mm. I couldn't be happy with that. Totally. You know, like, it's just, it's like if, if your sister gets married and you're still single, it's just like, how dare you, you know? <laughs> totally. It's kind of how I felt about it. So it was just, I was here and everyone's so happy. And I'm like, they're just so free. They're not... <laughs> Yeah, they don't have that hurt that I have. They don't have that lack that I have. And I mean, even just like the worship here was just crazy compared to what I was used to. Like even the friend that I'd gone with was just absolutely insane <laughs> worship wise. Um, so it was it was pretty overwhelming. And I actually found myself at least the first two times, if not the first three times that I was here, I would just weep during worship because it was just so overwhelming. And I was like, I don't I don't understand what's happening right now. Um, but you know, yeah, I sort of started gradually becoming more comfortable and then, you know, eventually I was singing along to worship just because I wanted to sing and then I was like, oh, it's more than just wanting to sing, like, I, I, I want to be here with God. Totally. It's a yeah. wonderful experience. Um, what would you describe your, like, from coming to Anchor Point as a non-believer to, I'm assuming you're a believer now. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it gotta be. What, what would you describe as, like, the process there? Was it, like, on the beach that day you decided to become a believer? Or was it just a slow, like, I guess I'm a believer now? Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty slow, I guess I'm a believer now is kind of how it happened. Like, I don't know. I feel like when I started, like, singing during worship, like, that was around the time when I was just like, I don't know, what was happening here was so good that there was no way that I wasn't going to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I just sort of, I had a moment where I was like, I was just like, what, what's happening here is so good that there's no way I'm not going to be a part of it. Um, I just, I was so, yeah, just the, be, being here, being in like presence with God was so like thrilling and fulfilling that I wasn't sure what the future would hold, like logistically, like entitle what I would become and like what I'd call myself but I knew that I was gonna like keep pursuing whatever this is cool. um and so I started going to small group and stuff and, and talking to people and just exploring and I don't know I felt like it was almost like I, I often liken like faith and relationship with God to like human relationships like romantic relationships and it felt very much like I just started dating somebody and I already knew I was going to marry them but I wasn't in love yet mm -hmm. you know and that was like my relationship with God is like I was already like 
I'm gonna be with you forever, but I'm just not in love yet, you know? And yeah. so I guess on that beach, when I got baptized in the moment, that was me, like, putting on the wedding ring. Mm. Like, I was just, and, and I'm still, like, God and I are still kind of falling in love, you know what I mean? Mm. Like, I'm really not anywhere near as strong in the faith as so many other people are. But to me, getting baptized was just like, confirming, yeah, I'm not leaving. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to. Because that was still like an option for right. a while, and it's just not an option anymore. Mm -hmm. Like, no matter what happens, I really don't know what's going to happen, but I know that I'm not leaving. Yeah. I don't think getting baptized means you need to have all the answers. I <laughs> no, and I have like none of the answers. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, I think a very, like that analogy of like putting on the wedding ring, like that's a very good, like, yeah. you're making that promise yeah. at this point. I think that's, that's beautiful yeah. in some ways. Um, I had listened to your, I had recorded all of the, like, um, test, like, when you were on the beach talking into the mic, I just recorded all that, um, and one thing you had talked about was, like, you were, you felt angry, but justified in your anger, um, and, and you felt like, before, like, fall, falling away, you had a bunch of questions, but you didn't know what to do with those questions, uh -huh. um, and then you listened to one of Connor's messages, and you felt like you were allowed to have questions, and yeah. then, some of those questions were being answered. Yeah. Um, what is the answering of those questions? Like, what's the process been like that for you? So, a lot of it, which is awesome about Anchor Point because of the size of it, because of how small it is, you can talk to the people who do the message. Like, almost always you can find them afterwards and go, hey, you know, sorry to squeeze in, I have this question, right? And so, yeah, like a lot of it has been, oh wow, you know, that message that Daryl did was super good. I should go email him or I should go find him and talk to him about it. And just like, expanding upon things and just I mean I've just been so amazed at how whenever I go hey but what about this this part confused me someone's like that's a really awesome question so this is what I think mm -hmm. but this is what the Bible says or like look at these passages to learn more about it like people have been encouraging me not only encouraging me to go and find the answers but also giving me their own answers when they mm -hmm. have them totally. which is just a really exciting thing because I feel like so much of my of my questioning in life has been like, I've always wondered about this, and then someone going, oh cool, anyways, like, it's just, yeah. like, are you not going to help me out? <laughs> like, I'm wrestling with this, I'm not getting anywhere. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that definitely has very much been my experience. Like, I started going to Anchor Point with the mentality of purely just, like, scholarship, like, mm -hmm. like debate, mm -hmm. is what I was going into it with. Like, I was like, going to the sermon, writing stuff down, like, mm, I don't know about this part, mm, I don't know about that, you know, I disagree with this, I like this, you know, and then I would just, you know, debate, right? Mm -hmm. But almost after, like, one time that I came, it just immediately switched from, like, debate and criticism to, like, wanting to know more, mm -hmm. wanting to expand my understanding, which is just a really, like, very sudden switch, but mm -hmm. it was really cool. The question was, retrospectively, was there any spiritual warfare before mm -hmm. that Sunday? Was there anything that, like, happened right before that Sunday that kind of made you not want to come that Sunday or is there any and if no is the answer no is perfectly acceptable like, but yeah I, I would say like there was stuff that was happening and I don't know if it was spiritual warfare but like yeah I mean that weekend I would wanted to come for like the full weekend to family camp I really wanted to come but it was my brother's birthday and so I had to hang out with him because, you know, it's his birthday, you don't want to make him feel loved, right? But I just didn't really have any fun either. Like, it was, I, his, we went to see, like, Barbenheimer, right? Oh, yeah. Both of them <laughs> on the same night, right? And I just wasn't totally clear on what the event would be like. Um, and I ended up going, and I love movies, like, so much, but I ended up going and just not having any fun, which just kind of sucked. And so I was just in, and it was, I was surrounded by all these people that I don't know. And, like, normally being around people I don't know is, like, the coolest thing in the world, but I was, like, not happy with it. So I was just in this weird place where I was like, this is all the things that I should love, and I don't love it. Like, I don't feel good right now. Um, and then I also had this experience where, like, um, on the beach, uh, a friend of mine who just, was one of those friends who, like, they needed more from me than I needed from them, mm -hmm. right? So it wasn't really, like, a balanced thing. Like, this friend of mine suddenly messaged me and just said, like, I'm going to stop talking to you mm -hmm. because, like, you know, it's just unhealthy or, you know, I just don't, I feel like you don't really like me or that kind of thing. You know, it was just sort of a, a an emotional dump. Like, while I was sitting there on the beach already having this, like, whole emotional thing going on, um, so yeah, there was definitely a lot happening, and I kind of feel like 
in a lot of ways it was like life or the enemy like trying to distract me from the good that was right in front of me like there was so much that I was like trying to focus on like I was really psyched about being at family camp but I just felt like there was so much going like hey but what about this pain that's in your life what about this pain that's in your life what about all these things that you need to be thinking about and then Michaela came up and sat next to me and went I have clothes in my car if you need them and it was like Jesus was sitting on my shoulder being like it's okay you can put all of that aside because you and I both know that you wanted this mm -hmm. so yeah I guess I guess I would say there was I've never really thought about it that way but yeah I was I would say there definitely was spiritual warfare going on mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um yeah I think I think there's a lot of reasons the enemy doesn't want us to get baptized and like even just that like that again that promise of like the wedding ring yeah like vows like he's doing everything in his power not to let you put that wedding ring on yeah. and like trying to convince you and so i don't know maybe that wasn't spiritual warfare maybe it was like i don't think we'll know until we get to heaven yeah. but um i think it's very cool to see like even just to retrospectively see what mm -hmm. kind of what's going on so now that you're baptized, would you say anything's changed? Like, is your life kind of the same, or has your life changed since you got baptized? I very much felt like there was, like, a sudden change, like, on the beach that day. I came out of the water, and I was just talking to my friend, and I was like, something's going to be different now. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to be making different decisions. And, like, it's not super drastic, because it's not like I was, like, falling off the wagon in all sorts of ways. But it's like, you know... I would meet somebody and like flirt with them a little with like no intention of doing anything and not or taking the relationship anywhere and then I got baptized and I was like I don't need to be doing that anymore like that's not what relationships are all about like is that kind of thing <laughs> just like little life decisions where I was realizing that's like that's not what God wants for me and sort of I guess it sort of was the beginning of a gradual transition of beginning to want what God wants for me <laughs> I think yeah has there been any ways that, like, your walk with, like, how you've been growing in your walk with, like, God changed? Like, has that been just the same process before and after baptism? Or have you, like, changed your approach on your walk with God? Yeah, I, I definitely think so. Because, like, before it was just like, hmm, I have this question about God. I gotta go find someone to talk to about it. And lately it's been more like, hmm, I have this question about God. You know, I'll think about it for a bit on my own, I'll ask God about it, and then maybe talk to somebody about it, right? Like, it feels very much like now God and I are actually on that journey together. Mm -hmm. It's not just me trying to work it out, and he's, like, over there in the distance. Like, like now we're kind of we're kind of partners totally. in the struggle. Kind of like getting God to, like, making your walk with God your own and not, like, dependent yeah. on someone else. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, very much so, yeah. No, that's really awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, if, if someone were to come up to you and just, like, ask you, like, hey, I'm, like, on the fence about baptism, like, is there anything you'd say to them that kind of, like, as an encouragement going into baptism, like? Yeah, um, so my situation was I thought that I couldn't get baptized because I just, like, wasn't confident enough. Like, I just thought, thought that, I thought that my faith wasn't, good enough um because like i said like god and i had just kind of started dating we weren't in love yet you know um but when the idea of actually doing it came to me i just wept and like it just meant so much to me and i just wanted it so badly um and i feel like if like if somebody's feeling that way they may think like you know the logic brain is going you know, you might not know enough, you're not confident enough, everyone else is better at faith than you are. But the fact is that, like, baptism really is, it's, it's like a promise between you and God. Mm -hmm. And if you and God want to make that promise, like, nothing's going to stop you. I mean, like, that day that I got baptized, there were tons of, like, kids getting baptized who were, like, super young. Mm -hmm. And it's like, they have so much life left to live, so much more of God to discover. But that doesn't mean they can't make this promise now, saying, like we're in this together mm -hmm. like that and that's really what I think it is is it's just it's saying to God we're in this together yeah yeah there's a really um cool part in your testimony that you had talked about where you had said why not now like it was yeah. kind of just that like that like last point of like why not like yeah like has that like 
been a continual theme in your walk? Like, mm -hmm. this idea of, like, there's no reason not to do it now. Has that been a continuous thing, or has that kind of just been a one-off? I guess sort of the idea there is, like, um, like, a lot of my aunts and uncles, like, met their spouses when they were, like, in high school, mm -hmm. right? And then they would like date for years thinking like oh we're not gonna get married we're just dating we just met in high school and then they would kind of realize one day like hmm, I don't really want to be with anyone else ever and so why are we not getting married you know why not if like it was kind of a situation of if I'm if I already know I'm gonna be here forever and I'm not going anywhere why not make that official now um, so yeah, I, I I wouldn't say I'm not I'm not usually like a super spontaneous person with that kind of thing, but in that situation I was sitting there and I was just like, I already know that I've made this decision even if it hasn't really like sunk in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, why not now? I, guess. I do hope like what you said about people like asking me about stuff will happen because like I feel like I have a very different perspective about baptism than everyone from a lot of people, um, just because my experience has been completely different and I just I don't know as much as everyone else does so for me it's been a much more emotional journey than like an intellectual journey mm -hmm. so like if somebody was you know on the same page as me and needed some advice I would be thrilled if they'd ask me for that yeah 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 that's what I think that's what's really nice about anchor point is every like we're all in this together and we're all like um sorry we're all like no one feels like they're an island. Like, it feels very approachable. Like, I don't feel like, oh, that, like, Donovan's too special. I can't yeah. talk to him. Like, yeah. Everyone feels very approachable. And so one thing that I've wanted to do with video testimonies for a while now is, like, sometimes it's hard just to know who to talk to. And yeah. so, like, I think this gives a unique opportunity of, like, if someone sees, hey, my life in some ways is similar to Annie's. Like, mm -hmm. I have X question, Y question. Yeah. Just to know who to talk to, even, mm -hmm. instead of it just being an open-ended thing. Yeah. yeah.